Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this video I'm going to show you the three key recording methods when working with Reaper. So I'm going to show you all of those and how we can work with them right now. Now recording with Reaper is pretty straightforward. Unlike a lot of other doors, you don't have to worry about choosing a stereo track or a mono track or anything like that. You can literally just create the track depending upon the input signal and what you choose will depend upon the kind of track that's being created. So you've got a lot of flexibility without having to mess about with creating certain types of tracks and then getting yourself confused because you may have chosen the wrong one. So let's start off by just creating a simple track and I can come to the track control panel or the TCP, which is the main area on the left hand side. I can either double click, I can right click and choose insert new track, I could do control and T or I can go to insert and I can say insert new track from there. I'm just going to double click and that will create my new track for me. Now there's a couple of things we have when we're working with this particular track. First of all we've got the record arm, we've got the option to choose the source and we can choose whether we want monitoring on or off. So what we're going to do for this example, because I'm recording this with a microphone and recording it on screen at the same time, I'm just going to disable that. And you'll find that when you create a new track, this won't be armed by default. So your record monitoring won't necessarily be on. I've set up one of the preferences that allows me to do that. So when I create a new track, I'm already set up for monitoring. But all you need to do is click on this little symbol and you'll find this is what you'll see when you create a new track, which is it switched off. You can then click once to switch monitoring on, or you can click a second time to record record monitoring. So you can see you have a few options if we right click as well. So you can see we've got monitor input, monitor input tape auto style and so on. We're just going to set that back to not being enabled. But like I say, when you were doing this, chances are you're probably going to want to enable the first option, which is this one. Okay, so we've got the record option, which just arms a specific track. But if we come up to the top, you can see we've also got a record button up there, which specifies that we want Reaper to record whatever tracks are armed from whatever point the playhead is on. So once we hit that, it'll start playing, start recording, and we can start creating audio. Now, before I can start recording anything, I need to tell Reaper what input I'm using. Now, I'm using a quad capture by Roland, so I've got four inputs, and I'm just going to choose the relevant input for my microphone. So you can see where it says left at the moment. If I click on there, we've got a whole range of options. We've got input mono, input stereo, input MIDI, and input none. And inside there, you can see we've got a flyout, and depending upon the kind of interface you've got set up in Reaper and whatever's configured that you're using on yours, you'll see different options. So you can see if I go to MIDI, for example, you see a quad captures in there and I've got a range of channels I can choose from. However, I'm recording a microphone, so all I'm going to do is come up to input mono and I'm going to choose right. So once I've done that now, we see nothing coming up on the, on the screen. But once I hit the record arm, you'll see this meter will start to show audio input. So once I click that, you now see that as I speak, the audio input levels are showing us there's an audio input coming in there. And if we look at the mix control panel at the bottom, you can see pretty much the same information. So this is the point where you want to make sure that you're not clipping anything. So you can see at the moment my signal is sitting around minus 6.3 dB, which is fine, not too hot. But if you want to adjust that, adjust it on your interface to make sure that you have no clipping to so find the loudest point of whatever you're going to be playing whether that's guitar or drums or mic vocals whatever it is find the maximum level you're going to do on there and then set your level on your audio interface accordingly and i'll cover this in its own dedicated video and i'll take a look at that it's in the description below but we're not going to worry about that for now i just want to show you how the recording modes work so we're now all set up ready to start recording if I wanted to apply effects to this, I could easily do that, and I can have those running alongside the audio as it's being recorded. For this, though, we're just going to leave that plain and simple and just deal with the record input. So once I've got the track armed, I've got everything set up. If I had monitoring on, I'd listen to what I was actually coming out of my speakers, and we're good to go. So now if I come to the record button, once I click on that, we'll start recording and it'll record from the position of the playhead, which you can see at the moment is right at the beginning of the audio track. So it'll start playing from that point on and start recording the audio. So let's do that. Let's just press the record button or do control and R on the keyboard. So we'll hit that. And once I start saying something, you can see now we start to get a waveform appear, which shows the audio being recorded as I'm saying or recording or playing the music or whatever it is I'm doing. That will be Record it into Reaper. Pretty straightforward. So once we hit stop, we've now finished. So if I rewind that back and I play it, you hear what we just said. 
And once I start saying something, you can see now we start to get a waveform appear, which shows. Now you'll notice that I also have the record armed is still armed. And even though that is armed, and I can still see my recording level showing up, so there's still a feed coming into the track, Reaper knows that because I haven't hit the record button, that all it's going to do is actually just play that back. So when we hit play, it's not going to record anything, it's only going to play it back. Only when we actually hit the record button will we start to record the audio as it's being fed through our audio interface into Reaper. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, Reaper gives us three key methods for recording. And you'll see that when we hit the record button, it'll just arm the recording. However, if we right click, you see we now get three record modes. We get time selection auto punch and auto punch selected items. So if I just choose, let's just say for example, the time selection auto punch, you see we now get a different symbol on the record. We now get the sort of marker points for the beginning and the end of the piece of audio that we want to work with. So what does this do? Well, if we hit record now, That'll just record straight over the top. So let's just take that back out, put it into normal record mode, and I'll just hit the record, and you'll see that'll automatically go straight over the top and create a second take. So here we go. We're now doing a second take or another piece of audio, and as you can see, it goes straight over the top of the audio we've recorded. Once I hit stop, you see now we've got a second take. And that's great, but it's not always what we want to do. So let's just undo that by Control command z Let's just say, for example, I wanted to punch in a piece of audio at this point. So I've recorded everything up to there was perfect, and everything after that was perfect, but this bit had a mistake in it. Well, the easiest way of doing that is to use the other record method. So we've got record mode, time selection, auto punch. So what will happen is I'll make a selection. We'll put the playhead, say, a couple of bars before what we want so we can get a sort of count in. And now when we hit record, you'll see that this piece of audio that isn't selected won't be affected. The original audio will stay in place and not be recorded over. Only when we get to this section that we've highlighted will the audio start to overwrite that piece of audio, create a second or third or fourth take, and then once we get past that point, it'll go back into normal playback mode with no record, even though we've got the record button selected. So let's try that. So let's just click. You can see now we start to get a waveform of as you can see, recorded, that now stops. As soon as we get to the portion of audio that we want to record and overdub, that will stop the playback and start the recording session. So let's just try that again. Do Control Command Z to undo it. And let's just try that. So I'll just waffle on. So we go. You can see now this we start to get a waveform. Fine. Now we're punching into this new section. Recorded, as I'm saying. Okay. So we've done that, so let's just listen. Now, obviously it's gonna make no sense whatsoever because I'm just ad-libbing, but let's take a listen. Now we start to get a waveform of Now we're punching into this new section. Ordered, as I'm saying. So you can see we now get that new piece of audio in that second take, and if we do it again, so let's just hit record again. And we start so to get a waveform of For a third take, so this is a third option. Ordered, as I'm saying, or recording, or. And we'll do that, play that back. Again. And we start to get a waveform of for a third take. So this is a third option. Ordered, as I'm saying, or so this is a great way. If you're doing something like a guitar solo, for example, and you want to get one phrase in there, you just not getting right. You can do it like this, so you can play along. You'll have no effect. You'll hear back what you're playing alongside what's being played back. And then once you jump into the portion that's the auto, the sort of the selected piece of audio. You'll start recording. Once you go past that, it'll stop and go back to just playback. So it's a great way of doing that. And like I say, we've got takes, and we can just audition the takes and choose the best one. So let's just get rid of that. Go back to where we were. Get rid of that selection. And that's the second option. Now, the third option gives us even more control. So let's just right-click and say Auto Punch Selected Items. And you'll see now we get a different icon again for the record button. Now this auto punch selected items supercharges the previous option. So with that, we can choose one piece of audio, one area we want to affect. We can't do multiple different areas. So let's just say, to use the example in the last one, we were doing a guitar solo, and we found that most of it was okay, but there were two or three phases, uh, phrases in there you just didn't like. You just want to go over those a few times. Well, it's going to make it easier to be able to select those pieces, play the entire piece, and then when you get to those points where you want to do the overdub, it'll just cut in, 
record that little phrase, go to the next bit where you don't need to record it, then go to the next bit where you want to record it, and repeat and repeat as and when needed. So instead of doing the entire thing or doing it piece by piece, you can do it in multiple chunks. So let me, let me demonstrate that. We've got one piece of audio at the moment. Let's expand that out a little bit. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to do this section and this section. So we've got a couple of bars, but they're not adjacent to each other. We've got something in between we're happy with. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our playhead, get rid of this selection, place our playhead where we want, hit S to split the track. Same again. So we're just breaking this down now into the component pieces. So this piece of audio and this piece of audio need to be overdubbed. But the first piece, the third piece, and the fifth piece are all fine. So all we need to do is click on the first one, hold the control or the command key on the keyboard down, and click on the next one. And you'll see that now highlights both of those pieces of audio. So we're now in a position that when we hit record, the record will only arm on these highlighted areas. So let's just put the playhead back. Let's just run that back to there. Let's just hit record, like I say, making sure that we're in auto punch selected items mode. Once we hit record, I'll just carry on talking and you'll see that this will be unaffected. This will record, unaffected, record, and so on. So let's just try that. Once I start okay, so saying this is an something area not affected, and this is an area is affected, here, which shows the affected. audio being record is affected. Pretty cool. Audio or playing the music or whatever it is Again, I'm doing. We'll stop. That so you can see now we have additional takes on only the pieces of audio that we set up to be selected. And then when we're working with this auto punch selected items mode, then we can punch in to those relevant selected pieces of audio. So a quick and easy way of being able to edit and do, you know, sort of create multiple takes on only the pieces of audio that you want. Well, that's the three key recording methods that you have available with Reaper. Now, I hope this has given you an insight into how you can use those, and I hope it gives you an insight into how you can speed up your recording process using these techniques. As always, if you've got comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week. And until next time, take care.